Welcome, friends. It's almost midnight, and you've found your way to the Pikecast. Come along as we careen through the catalog of the most formative horror writer of our young adult days, Christopher Pike. From adult perspectives, we'll revisit these YA books our parents probably would never have let us read had they known what lie inside. We tackle one book per episode in a freewheeling and unbiased chat. So grab your battered paperback, pull the flashlight from the kitchen drawer, climb under your bed covers, and devour a good book with us. Greetings, fellow pikers, and welcome to the Pikecast. I'm Cooper Beckett, and I'm thrilled to be joined by my lovely co-hosts. Hi, I'm Cassie. Hi, I'm Becca. Today, we're digging into Christopher Pike's 1992 book, Master of Murder. And we're going to be dissecting it in great detail, spoiling each and every plot twist. So consider yourself warned. If you're enjoying the Pike cast, please leave us a review on the podcast service of your choice. Now, let's welcome our guest Piker this week, film distributor, critic, and festival programmer, Jenny Nolf. So happy to have you here, Jenny. Hi, thank you for having me. This is, uh, we, we've been talking about this for a while, and it's always exciting to meet someone with the same type of enthusiasm for Pike as you. I felt really awkward when I originally, like, reached out to you guys, but uh, <laughs> Joe was like, don't worry about it, Jenny. He, it's yeah. okay. <laughs> Well, we're all, we're all very awkward and we're all living in this, this, uh, this time when it's nice to reflect on early 1990s, I think. So before we really dig into the book, we have a set of questions we ask all of our guests. And I believe Cassie has our first one this week. <clears throat> okay. Tell us how you discovered Christopher Pike. Okay, wow. Um, <laughs> so right on the spot. <laughs> it really is. Um, so it's a little bit of a funny story, uh, which I have told uh, Cooper in advance. But basically, I was uh, at my middle school library, and I was really into horror books, except I did not want to read Stephen King for whatever reason there may be. It just, it was too popular for me, so I decided to oh, oh, okay. expand and look at other authors and i found this book called the chain letter two <laughs> mm -hmm. not even the first one <laughs> and i was like yeah that sounds like something i'd want to read and i got it and the rest is history i, I stole it from the library <laughs> <laughs> uh they had a few others weekend was another one i think mm. that i the library had and i ended up buying later but uh, there also used to be a ton of Christopher Pike books at Half Price Books, which is a kind of like oh, a yeah. resale bookstore. I don't know if everywhere has it. But um, yeah, I, I got a ton from there. And the rest was, yeah, history. I was obsessed with Fear Street as well. But this was mm -hmm. like more adult Fear Street. So Absolutely. So what do you consider to be the one thing that keeps Christopher Pike on your mind? Oh, my God. Probably the... <laughs> The, like, raunchiness of it all. <laughs> <laughs> you are not alone in that. I'm like, you know, it's really funny because I didn't really get into horror movies until, like, a little bit later. Because, I mean, I kind of always liked horror adjacent stuff, but uh, I was, like, really huge scaredy cat. So okay. horror movies wasn't, like, a huge thing for me. So I didn't watch, like, 80s movies until, like, I was, like, in my, like, I don't know, 15, like, late teens. But, like, Christopher Pike to me was, like was that nostalgia that I think a lot of people have for 80s horror and kind of that kind of stuff. So I, he is my like gateway, if you will. I think it feeds the same needs for us as young people as 80s horror, because 80s horror is notorious for its violence and its sex. And Christopher Pike has more violence and more sex than any other uh of of the genres he really does <laughs> and that's what's great about it it is what's great about it there's, there's so much sex and like as like a 12 13 year old i was like what no this is amazing <laughs> <laughs> i'm an adult now i read adult books <laughs> 
So I know you mentioned Chain Letter too. What are some of your other favorite Christopher Pike books from growing up? Oh, uh, the Remember Me trilogy is easily my favorite. I, I've reread the first one. Oh God, how many times? Like I used to reread it once a year up until like maybe I was like 25, uh, which is only like six years ago. So it's so it was like 10, like a decade of reading that book once a year. Um, yeah, that one. And probably Master of Murder used to be up there, but I also really, really love um, I like Monster a lot. Oh, yeah. And uh, The Lost Mind. Oh, I love that one. I like that one, too. Yeah. Yeah, those are some of the highlights. <laughs> oh, wait. I'm... And also Bury Me Deep. I was like, obsessed with that one. And I also <laughs> I also learned to scuba dive because of that book. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Wow. Yeah. Did you tell that them was, when uh... you were doing the classes? Were you like, I read about this in the book and I have to try it? <laughs> I read about this in a murder series and a murder like book. And then I was like, oh yeah, I definitely need to like get my scoop, spooky dead people on under the water. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. That's what I told them now. <laughs> okay. Let's move on to tonight's book. Master of murder. Uh, Becca, would you read the back of the book this week for us? I shall. No one knew he was famous. Marvin was an 18 year old senior in high school. He was also America's best-selling author of teenage fiction. Millions of kids read his books. In fact, his latest series, The Mystery at Silver Spring, was the craze at his high school. But Marvin wrote under a pen name, and no one knew who he was. He was rich and famous, but he couldn't even get a date for Friday night. Yet, Marvin wanted to remain unknown. He was worried that his incredible career was about to hit a brick wall. The final installment of his famous series was overdue. His millions of fans were dying to know what he was what was going to happen in his series, but so was Marvin. He had no idea how the story was supposed to end. Then one night, he opens a fan letter. It had come from his publisher in the usual way, but this letter says, I know who you are, and the postmark is from his local town. At first, Marvin is unconcerned about the letter, but then another arrives, saying more. Soon, Marvin is caught up in a web of mystery, more complex and frightening than his own books, but too late, he realizes that the stories he has been spinning are true. Dun-dun-dun. <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot of information that was so much just a... good Thank lord you. <laughs> oh you're welcome is that why you didn't want it it was so much and just looking at it made me so tired becca i was like i don't think i can do this oh my god <laughs> well i got your back thank you i appreciate you okay so this this is both accurate and misleading i feel like because he's not writing the truth and that that would imply some mystical connection to what really happened. His story is basically just a Twin Peaks ripoff. You know, about the popular pretty girl who is killed and wrapped in plastic. But it's it's misleading. But not as misleading as the cover. The cover which is wild. said he wrote about his own murder. Is the title. <laughs> Which is just flagrantly untrue. <laughs> I also, um, I love the picture of uh, the girl. Oh God, I can't I remember do her too. name. Shelly? Yes. Yeah. No? Yes. <laughs> and and I really, I, I particularly love his old ass computer. Because <laughs> I had that computer, I'm pretty sure. That looks like my old Epson uh, with with the big floppy drive and everything, I love that. Oh my god! Wait, do you have a different cover than me? I don't know which one do you have. I have one. Well, first off, it does say he wrote about his own murder, uh, but <laughs> <laughs> it's uh it's Shelley, and then him like looming in the background with a giant like face uh, with oh. the with the motorcycle helmet on, and it's cracked. It's cracked. Oh, I know that. Cover. I, I have that one. That's here. Awesome. I'm I think gonna... that's the newer cover. I'm going to email you the one. cover we're working with. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So they re-released the books um, <clears throat> in like, I don't know, 2000s or something. And the font is a little bit similar, but it's different. Because yeah. um, a couple of mine have that font and are similar to that. But that's like more modern. Well, I think what happened is they changed the designs a at a certain point, like mid to late 90s. And then they re-release the originals to match the new designs. Okay, um, I just emailed you the uh, the main Brian Kotsky cover, which is our our uh, our guy. 
this is crazy. I, I've only ever lived at this cover. So my mind, I'm like, <laughs> there's only, there can only be one. I've never seen this one until I, like, until just now Googling it. It's like the one on Goodreads too, but I could have also changed it on my Goodreads. <laughs> Not to like totally derail the conversation. No, no. It's... Be like, wow, a different cover. <laughs> I mean, one of the things we love about Christopher Pike is the fact that it's, uh, is, is the covers because they are so pulpy and so, um, you know, lurid. So it's, it's always cool to see the various covers, especially when you look at the, um, UK covers. Oh, I see that one that you're talking about. Yeah, That's Shelley a cool is cover. hot on it. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, oh, look at me in my mini skirt <laughs> with my little bow. Which her hair is incorrect, by the way. She wears it in pigtails, not a ponytail, but that's fine. We'll get into that. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, you're 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 taking it very seriously, and that's why you are a welcome guest on this show because you care that much, just like us. Yes. <laughs> okay. So, have you seen the the uh, the other cover now? I have. <laughs> okay. So that that's Brian Kotsky. That's the original Pike designer. Uh, and he's he's the one that I think uh, really captured my imagination throughout. And I just I love the computer, so that's on your I, cover. I'm, the Brian Kotsky one. Does his hair have texture? Because on mine it does, and it's tripping me out right now. Oh, like you can feel it? Yes. I mean, on mine it's flat, so I must oh have gosh. a later like printing. Super scratchy. Is that what you mean? Yeah, like it, yeah. like my whole yeah, and that even like the <laughs> keyboard and stuff. Like mine's like embossed. Yeah. And, like, <laughs> That's crazy. so weird. I didn't realize until I was just holding it. And I was like, why right. does it feel like fingerprints on his hair? Wow, that oh goes God. all out. In, yeah, in terms that's of some detail right there. I love Usually it. we only get the embossed title. Right. I got I got title, name, and hair. <laughs> <laughs> can, I, uh, can I make a Brian Kotsky note? This yes. book is actually, I don't know if it's like, if it means anything, but this is like dedicated to Brian. So I wonder if that's like to Brian Kotsky because that'd be really cute. Oh. Yeah, well, certainly could be. What a sweet, sweet. Dedication. Well, let's uh, let's move <laughs> into the Midnight Club. Let's start talking about these characters here, starting with Marvin Summer, aka <laughs> Max Slate, aka I really think Christopher Pike slash Kevin McFadden. I feel like he is he has given us a shortcut to a lot of questions i have had about christopher pike here i may be completely incorrect about that but that's one of those things that it would be real easy for him to refute if he wanted to come on the podcast <laughs> that's amazing do <laughs> <laughs> so you think he's a teenager or was well, no a no i i i, <laughs> at one point. I mean yeah that's true i mean, yes, it, I mean it, it, there's there's so many things here um, like always late for his manuscripts and his publisher needed the covers far in advance of the actual publication dates. So he had to figure out what would look good on the cover before he had even written a word of the book. You tell me that is not about his relationship with Brian Kotsky. No wonder it's for him. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, he honestly believed that he didn't make up his plots, that he uncovered them. Um, let's see. He... He could write incredibly fast when he had to. Once under the pressure of a deadline, he had written an entire book in 11 days. I mean, this this is Christopher Pike, no question. The editors of teen fiction didn't like it, they said, because it was too sophisticated. That very word was in five rejection slips he had received. If Christopher Pike does not have rejection slips saying your work is too sophisticated, I will... I don't know, eat McDonald's. But I mean that's 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 normal. So that's Are you sure? Really... It might remind you of dead cows. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about Marvin the character, separate from Marvin the Christopher Pike avatar. He is so precious, isn't he? Is Just... that are you do you mean that insultingly? Because I, I, mean that, I would agree. in a in a he is he sure has something. You know, if I wrote a book in high school about what it would be like to be famous for writing books in high school, I feel like it would be a lot like this. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you, Cooper. This is my Jeremy. He was the most obnoxious <laughs> person I have ever encountered in one of these books. Like, I don't I don't think you're hearing me right, right Cassie. 
What are you saying? You would have been like insufferable and terrible. Uh, yes, I find oh. it. I find it actually rather obnoxious how successful he is. How everybody's in love with him. How his stories come so easy to him. It's like whenever someone in a TV show decides, "I'm going to try to write a play." And then it becomes the most successful thing ever. And they've never written a play before. It's it's obnoxious. You know, at the time when I was in high school reading this, actually it was middle school. I, <laughs> this was my dream to be yeah. him. <laughs> I wanted to be this insufferable and terrible. <laughs> well, I feel like in high school, tough. I wouldn't have known he was insufferable and terrible. I don't think I did either because I like worshipped the ground he walked on. I was like, this is like my dream mm-hmm. to like be the famous writer and then have all of my friends jealous and, for reading and be me. The, the <laughs> hidden writer too. Yes. The, to have the, the man of mystery element of it and be rich. Like he's already rich. This is in the, in one of the first paragraphs in the book. He's only 17, still in high school, but already rich. Incredible. Yeah. He doesn't even have to go to college. I'm jealous. <laughs> I find this line very Christopher Pike fiction. The sex scenes he wrote had been read by millions of kids, but he had never done it himself. Oh my God, that, that line is so good. <laughs> There's a lot to unpack. <laughs> there is. There is. Um, and- I think I think it's even better that it kind of comes back at the end because he, uh, I guess it's a spoiler and we're going to get to that. Oh, but- if, if you haven't read the book by now, we, we have taken the gloves off. There are there is no no spoiler too big. OK, but that does come back when he like reads the book to like the, the school at the end yes. where like the, the opening page is like. Yeah. It's like a, a worse scene. version of the opening page of the book. Who would read like, that in front of their teachers? Yeah. <laughs> it is a I worse mean, version. It's like a higher, like, smuttier version yeah, of, exactly. yeah, the first page of the book, which is really, it's a nice little come, like, back around sort That's of thing. That's also something I have done in high school. You know, wrap it around and then have the book be about the writing of the book. It's another just obnoxious masturbatory writer fantasy. It really is. Now that I, uh, as an adult, I see that as a kid, teen, I was like, no, it's brilliant. everything you've ever <laughs> wanted as a as a teen uh, aspiring writer. Absolutely. Okay, so uh, Cassie uh, absolutely hates Marvin if if I, she's well, comparing him well, to Jeremy. I'm just saying, and it's in my defense too. I didn't read this one when I was younger. This is one of the few ones that I didn't. Okay. So I only have like my adult me to. <laughs> to judge him on so as a kid i might have been totally like way more there too like and been like oh that's so cool like he's so he's so cool like look at him in his car Mm -hmm. but instead like now i'm just like will you sit down you're like 15 like you're so stupid like you just got lucky you stupid little shit (laughs) (laughs) so what you're saying is it's jealousy cassie i'm just he was so smug about everything he was so smug and i'm just like how many other like look I'm not trying to make it about a thing. I'm just, there. are just, oh, just sometimes with mediocrity and look, he was a, look, if everybody, if all the teens love his book, that's fine. But don't go around saying like how, how great and smart and much better than everybody else around you. You are when you're famous, not even for writing teen books. Like, what are you doing? You're not, you didn't like solve world hunger or anything, sir. Sit down, like have perspective. I think. Why did you get me on a rant on him again? I love it. I love it, Cassie. And and just just the intensity in your voice, you are experiencing a hatred of Jeremy moment. And for those of you who don't know what we're talking about, give a listen to the last act episode where I flat out despise a fairly innocuous character to everybody else. I think he's lucky. I mean, he's not he he's not a bad guy. Like we've read books with other guys that I was like, Oh, he's kind of gross as a main character. So I didn't, there were some things he said that I was like, the, you know, but overall he was whatever. It's just, he was so convinced that he knew everything. And I think that's what like really started grating on me every time he was like, well, I know this, but there's, and even I know that there's something I don't know. Like, shut up, just shut up. And honestly, (laughs) he slips into some of the most self-righteous, angry teenager bullshit 
yeah. that I have ever read. In fact, I made an entire section for his angry young man bullshit. <laughs> I'm excited for that section. But before we go there, I want to introduce Shelley Quaid with the most definitive line in all of Christopher Pike. Oh my God, I know what you're I know what you're about to say. Yeah. <laughs> Shelley had hair and she had skin. Both lovely. <laughs> it killed me. It is one of the worst lines I've ever heard as a character introduction. Like, oh, she's she's a human. <laughs> there were so many skin. There were so many descriptions of her too. Like she smiled her Shelly smile and she yes. moved her Shelly eyebrows. And I'm like, what the fuck is a Shelly smile or a Shelly eyebrow? Like that's not a description. Get out of here. <laughs> this Shelley. is great too. Such that lovely line, eyes. reading it, oh my god, that just, it's like, what, is she like a bag of skin? That's yeah. like, what is this just, just carried around a bag of skin. <laughs> Shelly is a bag of skin, very lovely. She just screams, moisturize me. <laughs> oh my god, I love that reference. <laughs> yes, well played oh with, god, a, that's amazing. with a deep cut from who? <laughs> Oh, what was her really name? Good. I can't remember Cassandra. her name. Cassandra. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> oh, she might as well be Cassandra. Yeah. <laughs> According to uh, that Marvin. description. Yeah. And her eyes are big enough to take all of him in at a glance. Which, what, what is it? What? I don't know. It mean? sounds sexual. I don't right? think it is, but it sounds disturbingly sexual. It sounds like she's looking at his business. <laughs> it sounds like she's like a porcelain doll, like a creepy one, like chilling out in the corner that just so happens to have human skin and human hair. Yeah. Oh my God, that's way creepier. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. Uh, so, so Becca, you've always been a fan of, of the quippy girls. Yeah. And I don't know. See, Shelly's got a few decent quips. Does she fit or is she not quite there? I'm not vibing. No? (laughs) No. So am I going to see you at lunch? Shelly spoke coolly. I will be invisible. No one will see me. Not not doing it for you? No, that's so dumb. I'm sorry. (laughs) sorry. Okay. You're not falling for her skin and hair. No, routine. no, not no. not falling for it at all. Wow. No. Okay. Becca's seen enough skin and hair to know that that's nothing <laughs> special. <laughs> oh, I love it. So funny. <laughs> I just can't believe he wrote that and was like, "Yes." <laughs> <laughs> that's it's the like, line. This is it. <laughs> I feel like this that needs to be the subtitle of the episode. Uh, Peak performance. We have hair and skin, both lovely. <laughs> it just, it's so upsetting. It. <laughs> it really is. You know, it, all it makes me think of is there's this this designer that makes 3D uh, letters out of pictures of skin. And so it's these really uncomfortable human looking letters. Like one will have an ear and another will have hair. It's like tumors, like living tumors. Very upsetting. Why, Why is that what you think of, Cooper? I don't know, skin and hair. That's it. That's oh. all she is. It's skin why are and they hair. letters though? Why are they letters? I don't know why they're letters. I don't know. <laughs> I'm you know, I've been inside too long, honestly. <laughs> Cassie. If you, if you want to know the truth. This is how I knew that was the line that you were about to say. It's because I literally spent like 10 minutes like rethinking my life after reading it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, it's like on the second page or something. But I'm yeah, like, it's right at, at the beginning. And I was like, I worshipped this book and how it was written. <laughs> and this is a line that is thrown at me. I just I picture like, it just zooming in on your face like yeah. in the office or something. And it's just. <laughs> no, it's, it's it's like the later uh, Arrested Development. She, you just play Hello Darkness, My Old Friend as, <laughs> as she's staring at the book here. <laughs> that is very accurate to how I felt when I read that. <laughs> yeah, well, I've made a huge mistake. It's like, what was I thinking? <laughs> I want to I want to hit us with one more bit about Shelley Quaid in that she is literally in a schoolgirl outfit and Marvin makes it seem like he is the first person ever to consider it a schoolgirl outfit. She gestured to her red plaid blouse, 
her gray kilt skirt, her little schoolgirl's outfit, as he liked to think of it. <laughs> Very I original. Mean, yes, I mean, yeah, he he's he's a writer. He's a creep. Why he's so famous. Are you ready for the worst name I think Christopher Pike has ever used in a book yet so far? <laughs> yes. Triad Tyler. <laughs> Triad is not a name. <laughs> Triad is, is not a name. Not a name. And his last name is a name. Why not just make his last name his first name? What the fuck is Triad about? Like, <laughs> I know what a Triad is. I'm non-monogamous. I know that. Triad Tyler, that's not a thing. Maybe he's a... No, I was going to say maybe he's a, like a triathlete, but no, that doesn't... <laughs> It I mean, like you would have like... to say it's a nickname then. You can't just call him Tri and Tyler. <laughs> it's like he was like, I need to think of a character, like a third name for a character. <laughs> and then he's like, three, three, try. <laughs> <laughs> and Triad, which it, it annoys me every time I say his name. Triad also fits a fairly common jock stereotype in christopher pike in that he's big strong and handsome he's also stupid that's literally the description a wonderful combination big strong and handsome also stupid big old redwood dick yeah. redwood up in the house <laughs> <laughs> and uh marvin's most penetrating observations in life had convinced him that girls favored that combination above all others even intelligent girls like Shelly Quaid. But are we sure Shelly is intelligent? I don't know. He he flips on a dime on Shelly to be like, you know, she's the worst person in history. <laughs> Can I just, I just want to say something to Christopher Pike if he's listening. That's not a good enough reason to use the word penetrated. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah, really there's... threw me for a loop when you were reading that out loud. It just, I was like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> There are plenty of better moments to use penetration. <laughs> okay, I want to talk about the only good character in the whole. Yes, book. I'm so excited Anne about Summer, this song. <laughs> whose name is Anne, like Christopher Pike's sister's name is Anne, mm. and and is is being used in the book as character names. So, like, I mean, there's no doubt this is about Christopher Pike. So what you're saying is he was a teenage writer. <laughs> I mean, I, th I think for, for a long, a little while of his adulthood, he was also a teenage writer because, <laughs> uh, I mean, you have to be a little bit of a teenage writer to put the kind of sex and violence that we all craved into your work. <laughs> Amazing. He meant and all the there. best for him to be successful at it. We, we love him. That's... <laughs> We we just I feel like I see behind the curtain in a way I never have before. I do love Anne. Anne is awesome. And she's only eleven. And she hates Shelly. Yeah. She just, she totally hates Shelly. Never explained. She just is like, I hate her. <laughs> and you're like, okay. I feel like you have to listen to little sister's intuition, you know what I'm saying? Oh yeah. Yeah. If your little sister's saying that <laughs> yeah. she's bad news, yeah. Can she's we, like, that girl, she sucks. <laughs> Charlie, I would like to share this iconic Anne moment with you all. <laughs> oh, please. Okay, so she's supposed to be at school. And um, Marvin's like, why are you not at school? And she's like, I'm supposed to be sick. He's like, are you sick? She giggled, of course not. I'm just lazy. And I felt that in my bones, guys. <laughs> <laughs> iconic. <laughs> yes, yeah. I felt that. So, so what you're saying is Shelly Quaid doesn't make the the awesome, quirk, quick, quirky female character list, but Anne probably does. Heck yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I just I don't know why it's because of this podcast. I think, but any young, uh, quirky female character in in Pike's work now is Louise Belcher. I like that. To me. me yeah. too. I, I, I can see it, especially with Anne. <laughs> Marvin does make the strange comment that she's strikingly beautiful. Anne? Um, but you know, that's yeah, she's that's eleven. Fine. Yeah, she's eleven. <laughs> uh, I really liked that uh, she wants to be Arwen, 
and uh, calls out the and, and Marvin doesn't know who Arwen is the elven princess in the Lord of the Rings although I don't know if it's typo in my version but she did not marry Aragon she married Aragorn so I don't know if it's a typo or if someone was mistaken oh my god that would be amazing if that was a typo that just never has been caught Oh, I've, I have found a number of just typos in, in his work. So I'm going to, I'm going to give Pike the benefit of the doubt that he knows Aragorn if he's calling out Arwen well before the movies came out. Yeah. Cause I, she was written a lot more into the movies, which snaps yes. for Anne then. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. So do mom and dad have names? I don't know. Mom have- Summer and Dad Summer? Drunky one and drunky two. <laughs> Were they just <laughs> obnoxious, um, semi-absent parents? Because this is the Pike recurring theme, the absentee parent. And there is not much more of an absentee parent than mom sitting on the couch, eating junk food, watching Casablanca over and over and over, while her son, the famous writer, cads around town, having sex in hot tubs and, and uh, you know driving his sister around. I love that she eats popcorn all day long. Yeah, just just popcorn. And Marvin wants desperately for her to eat more food, like real food. But, yeah. Here's another reference to Anne's attractiveness. Oh, she was still an attractive woman. Not surprising. She looked like an older version of Anne. Mm. Hmm. I don't like the way he's talking about his little sister. I I know, right? I feel like Marvin's been a creep this whole time. So. Oh, well, well, yeah, we, we good, good point. Good point. <laughs> I'm not shocked. I'm just we, a little disgusted. You shouldn't be surprised. <laughs> I mean, Anne is like the oldest sounding 11 year old in history. That's yeah. true. true. I mean, Anne could have been the older sister and just changed nothing except for her age. Nothing, no dialogue, nothing. And she's Marvin's older sister, older, smarter sister. Huh? Um, Dad Summer is basically just a caricature from an after school special about drinking. He just bursts in and is violent and gives Marvin a chance to shine as the hero he wants himself to be. Yeah, that's now we about have- it. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I mean there's there's nothing really. That's they're they're non-characters. He exists. <laughs> he exists for Marvin at the end to be like, yeah, I beat the shit out of that guy. <laughs> I beat the shit out of him and he's not getting any of my money. Now let's talk about Harry Pastor, who is one in a grand tradition of Pike tropes of a character who died the year before. That is uh, that has happened in so many of these books now. Um, Harry had committed suicide the previous November by diving off a cliff at the local lake. And conveniently, we get uh, a checklist of things about Harry later in the book. He had a broken neck and a fractured skull. His palms were blistered. He had oil stains on his fingers and an unusual number of broken blood capillaries in his lower extremities. I have a lot of questions, mostly how Marvin like remembers all these little details. (laughs) (laughs) You know, he's a, he's a brilliant writer. He's got to be able to remember the little details. I think that's, that's the excuse, right? That's true. He's, he has no idea he's writing, uh, about this guy's death. No yeah. idea. <laughs> but is he? I mean, that's really the question. Ultimately, or is he writing about his own murder? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, the, with that cover, you know, who knows what's actually happening? But, like, Anne in the book is not very similar to Harry. Like, if there was a girl who died last year, then sure, then he could be writing the, the, but, but, it, yeah, it's it's just very like there's no question that Anne didn't actually commit suicide. Like she had barbed wire on her. So I don't. The character is Anne in the book, right? 
Yeah, I think he okay. named her after his sister. I remember that. Okay, detail. I just wanted to make I sure. Read, yes, I reread Anna it Gaffer. like uh, yes. early on, but yes, yes. So he's killing his sister now. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. It's weird that you would, you know, your first successful book, your first book is about the murder of uh, a character with your sister's name. That's weird. Like, I mean, that feels weird. Your Although, stunning, beautiful sister. <laughs> if he can't have her, no one can. That's, I mean, that's true. That's true. Uh, Fall into Darkness is the one about the death of Anne, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, Pike's done that too. Been there, done that. <laughs> I want to briefly stop at a, a another basically no, not a character character, Sid Green, an old man. And the only reason I'm stopping at him is because he has a line here that I loved. When I was that age, the only thing I thought about was girls and sex. I'd spend all day thinking about them, not that I ever had sex. I don't know what's wrong with young folk nowadays. <laughs> they can have all the sex they want, and they still ain't happy. Makes no sense to me. What a weirdo. Icon. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I, he's basically like Marvin and like yes. 50 years. <laughs> I don't understand why kids are just like running around doing other shit when they can just be having sex. Kids today. <laughs> Not enough sex, in my opinion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can barely even so that's it. our cast of characters for Master of Murder. And if anyone, uh, un unless there anyone is has one more, go. Oh, did I miss someone? It's Seymour the Frog. <laughs> Duh. I'm okay, kidding. good point. Good point. <laughs> Seymour the Frog. Uh, I have that here. Where is my Seymour the Frog section? Uh, this is way too long. He's a cute uh, frog that uh, wants to fly, and then he. Uh, okay. He dies. Yes. <laughs> um, so. His story is called The Becoming of Seymour the Frog, which is so pretentious. This perplexed me, and I genuinely am curious because I didn't care to look it up. Mrs. Jackson blinked in surprise. Is a frog an animal, Marvin? I think it's an amphibian. Amphibians are animals, right? Last I checked, my dude. Like, fish <laughs> are animals. Mammals are animals. Why would an amphibian right. not be an like animal? Animal is just like the umbrella term for everything. Yeah. Good. Okay. Yeah. Why is she so like concerned about this frog not fitting in with her really dumb prompt? <laughs> <laughs> yes, in indeed. I mean, I think she just doesn't like Seymour. And, you know, the, the fact that he ends his story with Seymour popped, he exploded like a green balloon set on top of a lit candle. His head went one way and his legs another, and there was blood everywhere. It was a real mess. The visual I just got. <laughs> I mean, he didn't like Seymour the Frog very much either if he murdered him. No, that's him. true. That's true. He didn't <laughs> want to a, be doing it anyway. That was that's a his own murder that he wrote about. <laughs> Good call. Okay, so now are we comfortable with moving on? Yes. Okay. <laughs> we'll move into Remember Me, our breakdown of the plot of Master of Murder. And we can't really talk about the plot of Master of Murder without talking about the ridiculous amount of plot of the Mystery of Silver Lake series that we get within the plot of Master of Murder. Not since last act have we gotten so much extraneous, non-plot-based story. I, what did you think of this at all? I hate it. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm trying to be nice, but it was so... There were too many names when there were already too many names. And mm -hmm. if you're going to give one of them a name like Triad, couldn't you make the other ones a little bit different? Like, yeah. I don't know. And then, like... 
I started losing track of who they were. So then, like, toward the end, when they're just like, Jessica, I was like, who the fuck is Jessica? Like, wait, what? I was so confused. It was just, for me, no sh- no shade to anybody else who liked it. It was so unnecessary, and I wanted to, like, rip out those pages and chew them and spit them onto the floor. <laughs> wow. Just, it, it was taking so long to get through them, and I wanted to know what happened with this, like, conceited little smug guy. Kathy, I didn't want to read why he was smug and what he wrote. Come on. <laughs> not since the textbook sections of 1984 have I felt so strongly about a chapter being just, let's remove it. Let's just take it out. Because it's not in any way enhancing the narrative. No, it didn't make the story better. It added an extra story that I didn't want. I feel like it's a really classic Pikeism, though, to like have like this whole other like book going on or dream sequence within oh, yeah. well, your story. I mean, yeah. <laughs> that it's like it's and it's all like a metaphor for the current story, but this one is like by and far the most confusing one that he's ever written because it's like this character is this character, but actually this character is split in two, and then we have another one that's actually like mostly like the story that we're talking about right now. But I I wrote this really convoluted one to begin with, so I have to kind of tie that in somehow, and <laughs> it's really really com- complicated. It really comes across like when you corner an author at a party at late at night and say, "Are any of your characters based on anyone you know?" And they they actually drop the pretense and we'll explain it to you. Uh, and yeah. It, He's like, it, actually, well, like five of them are one character that I know in real life. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Um, so the world of these slate mysteries where brave and beautiful young girls like Shelley herself single-handedly battled the forces of darkness, except Anne is dead at the beginning of the book. Just like Laura Palmer who didn't single-handedly battle anything until Fire Walk With Me, which came out after this book, I think. Can we just appreciate that he's just saying that in a world filled with people with skin and hair? (laughs) (laughs) Because that's all he told us about Shelley, right? I I think that is the best use of in a world ever. (laughs) In a world. Full of people with skin and hair. <laughs> One man. I mean, how unlikely is that? Skin and hair? Skin and hair. I've never seen it. Both. So attractive. I don't know if I can handle that. I mean, the, this all the descriptions of this Silver Lake book uh, are the the masturbatory fantasies of a writer. Uh, that his, his teacher, Mr. Remar, has just started. Oh, <laughs> also... With an acoustic guitar resting on his lap. I hate this teacher. (laughs) Said he likes the book so far, but he's only up to the fourth book. I hear the fifth one's already out. (sighs) I mean, this is before the internet. We we could give him a little break. (laughs) Okay, okay, okay. I mean, I mean, hey, I'm, I'm willing to cut Pike a lot of slack in a lot of ways. Oh, not Pike. I'm talking about the made-up oh, teacher. The <laughs> fictional teacher. She's like, we're not cutting Pike any slack. Okay, okay no. that's... <laughs> I'm cutting his fictional character some slack. It's like, well, okay. <laughs> okay. So wh- where are you cutting him slack? That he's willing to read these books or that he's uh, has an acoustic guitar in school? And he doesn't know the fifth one is out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's He's fair. like, uh, I heard through the grapevine <laughs> that the fifth one is out. You know, I'm not like seeing all of my students read it or anything. Well, and you know, all the all the students in that class are just like, God, teacher, <laughs> know something about what we're interested in. They're like, please read more of this smut <laughs> yes, <laughs> so we can yes, talk indeed. about it in class. <laughs> and uh, uh, here, here's uh, an example of that smut. Her body was found floating face down in Silver Lake, naked. They loved that part. Wow. Tied up with barbed wire and showing signs of sexual abuse. But the police were not releasing all the details. Except for those, apparently. (laughs) That's a lot of details. That is a lot of details. (laughs) Some pretty standard details. (laughs) (laughs) It is crazy that he like lets his like students like chat like about like oh how they'll like 
They want to meet this author. They definitely want to have like sex with this author. Like yeah, they totally. have like these borderline like creepy fangirl fantasies. And <laughs> and like the teacher is like, this is fine. <laughs> He's he's cool because he's he's the acoustic guitar teacher. He's got to be cool, man. I bet he has a teacher would never. Yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> and a scruffy beard. And he wears sandals to school. Ugh, ugh. And, and I bet he would hit old, on like three uh, of those girls in class. One of those headbands, it. you know, that people turned into like guitar straps. I hate him so much. Yeah. <laughs> So the last thing I want to note about the Mystery of Silver Lake series is this one sentence paragraph in Silver Lake, everyone is screwing everyone else. Bam. (laughs) There we go. (laughs) Do they mean like with like rudeness or like with doing it? No, that was that was after the paragraph where they were talking about all the different people who are having sex and who they were having sex with. And then, and then he, and that's the problem when you're summarizing a a story because you very quickly come to, and then he went to the store and then they met up for sex and then she came home and then they had sex there. And it's, it's like, this is not really that interesting and very much not very creative. Also not realistic. (laughs) (laughs) true sorry yeah didn't we give him a chance to put the stuff away in between like <laughs> how are, like the stuff's frozen some of it i'm sure well i mean not always well maybe if you know you're gonna have sex when you get home you you uh skimp on the frozen stuff sorry but that's not coming between me and my ice cream okay that's fair, <laughs> that's fair. I'm not letting that melt. That's precious cargo. Uh-uh. No way. Okay, as we move on to the plot, I'm going to hit you with a few more things I've learned about Pike here. <laughs> and the most meta sentence in the book and meta based on what I'm talking about right now is that was the mistake they made. They thought they knew him by what he wrote. It was true. Parts of him were in every one of his stories, but those parts were plugged into so many different characters. They couldn't be restructured into one whole person. In other words, he wasn't in the book. He was the book. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. I I I do like this that uh that his sister is has accused him of writing dead sister books. I mean, I'm sure his sister has definitely accused him of that a few times. <laughs> yeah. She's like she's dead and her name is like, Anne. Like literally you killed Anne. Dead. So <laughs> dead sister books. Uh, I I don't know. Has he written other books or is it only this series? He has written other books. He talks yeah. about them. Oh God, I, I I prepped really early for this, so I read it. Um, but he did talk about like this other series that did not sound half as interesting that he wrote. That, oh that was yeah, the one he that wrote the one with, uh, <laughs> with the web. Uh, so basically, oh, yeah. it was an, an uh, the wishing web. Yeah, a takeoff yes. of the tachyon web. I'm guessing. I think so. Maybe which was one of Pike's early books. So yeah. Uh, this is this is great here. Um, when when they try to figure out his real name, his real name's probably something like Irving Dumlop or Fred Smith, something boring like that. I want to know who Irving Dumlop is because it's got to be one of Fr- Pike's friends. What dumb name is that? <laughs> if you came up with that? You don't just pull that name out of the air. What kind I of hope mother? He did. You know, some basic name like Irving Dunlap. <laughs> basic, totally basic. I don't know if I would consider that basic, though. No, I mean, not it's, at all. It's, no. Okay. okay. Not just, in the I least. I feel like maybe no, it went over all. my head. <laughs> <laughs> like, where? I, I love that you are, you, you, you are like, wait a minute, but that's not, that's <laughs> not that's not just like is that basic to you? How many Irvings do you guys know? <laughs> I'm so sorry. The whole thing went over my whole head. No, no, no. no we love it. I thought it was funny. We liked it. I'm glad I could help. Okay. <laughs> so here's the part where I'm going to attempt to break down the plot. And Cassie, I oh. I may need your help because you know I miss things. Okay. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. Author. Writing books, 
all famous, but not telling anybody because I think he gets off on it. Um, in love with this girl. Yeah, I'm already <laughs> lost. Okay, but that was really, yeah. So <laughs> she, he thinks she cheats on him. With triad. After with with triad. Who after is her um, boyfriend? Him, yeah, <laughs> with her boyfriend, right. after True. asking him to look into a guy who died last summer. So he looks into him and then she, quote, cheats on him. And he gets so angry in his little, pathetic, teenage male brain that he decides to literally murder (laughs) Triad because apparently he is the master of murder. See, it's things like this that make me swear off dating, I tell (laughs) you. Isn't that crazy? He is literally, he has fame. He has all the money he could possibly want. And he's like, I can't have this bitch. I'm going to kill everybody who does. That is crazy to me. He's horrible. Yeah, in retrospect, when I was like younger, I was like, "Yeah, of course he's gonna go kill that guy. He sucks." And <laughs> I'm like, "What did this guy do to him? He actually like the first time you see this guy, and I know it's like a red herring, obviously, but like he's not too mean to him, and he's kind of friendly. And then Marvin is the one that's kind of a dick, actually. Yeah, yeah, totally. Here's here's the. Uh, here's a part about that uh, Saturday night triad probably just another role in the hay or the jets for the stupid jock my wasn't Shelly's schedule crowded who would it be Sunday night their speech teacher Mr. Raymar he was married but that shouldn't bother a girl like Shelly oh my god he is such an incel and it like dro- drove me it does kind of drive me crazy reading him like in my adulthood and thinking that I was like yeah, no, this is totally normal behavior when I was like a teenager. Hey, we were like, all oh, basically right. sociopaths as a teenager. Don't worry. Apparently. Yeah. <laughs> there have been some books where I'm just like, oh, I loved him when I was 15. That now I'm like, oh, you poor thing. What's wrong with you? Who's yeah, hurting you yeah, at this age? Yeah. Who hurt I you? Have... I was like, I yeah, Shelly sucks. And I'm like, oh, Shelly can make up her own damn mind. <laughs> yeah. So his girl. His Shelly screwing that poor excuse of a piece of meat. <laughs> and here he has to fall for the worst kind of slut and he was still in love with her that was why it hurt so much that is such trash oh, is it help that I'm reading it like that in, yeah in you, that? No, you're no, giving you're it Michael Scott energy <laughs> <laughs> like he, that's really how it sounds when you're doing it and it's funny it's making it better oh yeah Definitely the craziest part of this like whole plot, though, is the fact that he like sees someone else who tried to kill him, and he's like, "Oh yeah, well that didn't work for him. Let me take this idea, this yeah. exact same idea that did not work out for the first guy, and uh, it'll work out for me." And let me do it <laughs> in exactly the same way. You know, the whole time it's like, "Oh well, he better he he tied this around his chest, and that's what killed him. I better not do that. Oh, I got to do that. I mean, that's the only way I'm going to do this." And and how many times did they need to call out the, he didn't really need his binoculars for you to know that Shelly was going to be on the back of that motorcycle? I mean, how did he not know that? Like, he, well, literally, yeah, yeah. he literally is played detective and figured that out. Well, the last time it didn't work out was because Shelly was on the bike. Yeah. Guess who's on the bike again? <laughs> uh, it's just frustrating. It's It's really, really just a lot of frustration how does this person have like so much money like how is this person like (laughs) successful at all if he fell for that trick and like it's a trick too because they're like oh we knew you were gonna do this and it's like wow (laughs) you're really that dumb and the wildest part i think is that shelly gets the villain monologue part but also gets the oh wait i'm not actually the villain i was wrong this whole thing was wrong part because I have backtracks. <laughs> Marvin is the villain. Marvin much really it. is the villain. He he went after a girl that was taken before. Then that person, you know, went kind of crazy, died. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And then, like, she comes back to him. He has no suspicions about why. And 
makes him do this plan, but sort of doesn't make him do the plan because he just goes crazy himself. And I don't know, she's actually the victim here. Totally. He's, yeah. He keeps trying to kill her boyfriends. And and Triad's a psychopath, but you can't retcon your decision to kill him into, oh, well, he's crazy because you didn't know that. There is no indication that Triad is crazy until he is crazy. <laughs> no, I'm t- yeah, right. <laughs> he turns it on in the in the purest suddenly villain moment in the book. Okay, I think I think uh, we're going to take a quick break and then get back into that villain thing. But I really just want to talk about thirst because I've got all sorts of smut. So we'll be right back with more on the Pikecast. Friends, where else can you get this kind of programming than the Pikecast? Nowhere, that's where. But we're trying to keep the lights on here. If you like what you're hearing and want it to keep happening, jump over to our Patreon at thepikecast.com slash Patreon and throw us a few bucks to join our private Discord server. Higher tiers get books, stickers, bookmarks, and even personalized shirts. That's thepikecast.com slash Patreon. Once, Osgood and Frost were the up-and-coming stars of the burgeoning paranormal investigation TV show craze before a hoax put an end to their friendship, partnership, and television careers. Now, over a decade later, Prudence Osgood is a barely functioning alcoholic ghost hunter for hire. Her yearning for mystery and adventure is reignited when she receives a cryptic, untraceable email. She can't resist embarking on an investigation that tugs threads, winding through a sinister series of disappearances, her former partner's family, and a night 20 years ago when a semi blew a yellow light and nearly killed her. Reviewers are calling Osgood as Gone a masterfully vulnerable and relatable 21st century horror story, and a bourbon-soaked supernatural mystery with sparkling dialogue that sticks the landing on LGBT characters, and main character Prudence Osgood, as tortured as she is clever, broken in all the best ways, and a true heroine for our times. Buy it today at As Good As Gone as a paperback, ebook, or audiobook narrated by me, J.J. Ronvier. Welcome back to the Pikecast. Okay, so we sort of got into the Eternal Enemy before our break. Do we feel that anyone but Triad is the purposeful villain? Um, yeah, the main dude tried to kill Triad, even if he's, <laughs> even if he's murder, he's, he's bad. He is okay. also bad. Okay. I feel like Marvin is like Cassie's Marvin. enemy. <laughs> yeah, I really, I just, I'm so angry that he just, uh, the number of basic people writing books out there and he's just, get, I'm going to hit him in the head with one of his own books. I would love he's that. a bad guy in my side. So I think that he is also the eternal enemy. Him and Triad are maybe not equal, but they're both gross. Well, we, we have to make Shelly partially an, uh, uh, an eternal enemy also. Do we? Because she just thought somebody had killed her boyfriend. She was trying to uncover a mystery. But she was, she was also to trying to kill the guy. <laughs> that she, she thought, thought he murdered someone. She, yeah. She and then you know thought. what? The, end, the guy who did wrong her, he's dead and buried. Guess that's what happens when you mess with Nancy Drew. <laughs> Oh, she's the real master of murder. Like, who's the actual master of murder at the end of this book? <laughs> Shelly. Okay. I mean, that is actually a really good argument because she she's the one that convinces Marvin to do this ridiculous plan. Yeah. He does. She, yeah, she's the even, mastermind. Even though she got like a few details incorrect and thought that. <laughs> well, that could it, happen, you know. Yeah. You know. I mean, the she whole got a few reason details. for it. Yes, <laughs> she got that incorrect. Yes, but you know what? She still she still convinced him. <laughs> but I think it's I think it, the thing that makes her not an enemy or not the eternal man, you know, the bad guy to me is that her she was trying to kill somebody. Okay, maybe she had a little bit of a murder time, you know, that's fine. But <laughs> it was because, <laughs> it. 
She it was so to point out you're glossing over the maybe she, she had a little okay. bit of a murder time. She did, but she was My trying girl to doesn't avenge. Go through it. She was avenging right. the death of somebody who she cared about. Whereas these two guys, these basic ass gross dudes, are like, I can't have this lady. Oh, let me fix that by killing men. What the heck? She and like, her killed my boyfriend. Yeah. yeah. What the heck? Well, they dropped the rope though. They did drop the rope. <laughs> yeah. Uh, every time the man is like, "Oh, I can't kill her though." Ugh, Except for Triad, I bet her. he would not have dropped the rope. He would have kept the rope up because he smashed her head into the railing. You know what? Yeah, what's really going to happen next year is Triad's brother is going to come to town and have to be convinced to do the rope trick again. And it's just it's an it's an endless cycle. Ah, good old quartet. <laughs> Thanks for laughing at that. <laughs> oh, I love it. Oh, Cassie, I love you. I love you so much. Okay. Does anyone have any more feels on uh, the eternal enemy? You know, I'm going to have to agree. It's probably Marvin. Because from the beginning, he was just shit. He was trying to steal girlfriends out there. <laughs> Driving other boyfriends to like a madness where they wanted to kill him. Yeah, yes. fair. But he also is the instigator. Uh, not really like polite to women. Definitely has the hots for his sister. He is the eternal enemy. <laughs> I agree. Yes, 100%. He also killed a frog for no reason. Poor, poor frog. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I have I have two more quotes on the angry teen angst, which fits in with Marvin being the eternal enemy. First, this is what he thinks of himself. He looks around him at the horror in the world, all the pain people cause one another, and he writes about it. He doesn't think he causes anyone pain by, like, asking out a girl that is literally unavailable. Well, and, I mean, that was in the scene where he's being a creeper at the mall, too. Oh, right. The mall that, oh my God, this is such a good. The mall scene was the most cringeworthy thing I have ever read in one of these books. Like, oh, Oh, with the. That's going to be in the problematic section. Don't worry. We'll save it. We'll save it. Because there is some literal problematic shit there. I mean, (laughs) I do. This is like vaguely related, but it's like early in the, like it's on page two where he's like, his series were the talks in malls and schools. And I just like, well, of course he's at the mall. His series is the talk of the mall. (laughs) The talk of malls in school. The talk of the mall. Like, imagine living in a life where, like, something was the talk of the mall. It's because the only people that go to the mall to talk are teenagers. Yeah, just that's true. Just out whose parents drop them off. The rest of us are there to shop and buy our shit and go home. <laughs> We're not talking about books about for teenagers. Come on. We do that on podcasts after the fact. <laughs> 20 years <laughs> later. <laughs> We're not at the mall. Time, We're professionally Jesse. doing this. <laughs> yeah. Time. This is this is our free time, not our shop time. <laughs> <laughs> not um, our pretzel time. <laughs> so speaking of cringeworthy interactions with people, Marvin tells his 11-year-old sister, I hope there are some pictures as they're going through their fan mail. Often fans sent him photographs of themselves. Occasionally, there was even a nude picture which made him nervous, though he had never thrown any of them away. Ew. And late at night, oh, here it is. Sometimes when he was lonely, he'd call up girls who had written him provocative letters, especially late at night. Okay, I'm not 100% positive, but I'm like 98% positive that I tried to write Christopher Pike a letter after I read this (laughs) book. Not like a, like I didn't like I was obviously thirteen, but uh-huh. I think I did like try to write to him to be like, oh maybe he'll call me. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I think I gave him my number. I'm like, I, 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 <laughs> well, well, I hope we're glad he didn't. Right. <laughs> well, in retrospect, that was a really bad idea. Oh my god. <laughs> That's well, so funny. Yeah. I mean, I I get it. So, you know. To I, be fair, they tell you not to give out your personal information online, but they don't say to write, like, don't write your favorite author with your phone number. That's, <laughs> yeah, they didn't right. cover that one. So, fair. I mean, theoretically, there's already a return address. So they know where you live. Oh, my it's God. True. Oh, my God. They knew everything about you. 
I mean, I would write my favorite authors all the time. I know Darren Shan responded to me and then he was like, I, I couldn't open some of your like letter because of my uh, lawyers, but because <laughs> I like I sent him a story and he was like, I can't oh, read it. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah. Oh, oh my God. When you said that, you didn't, there was, yeah, yeah, I was there, confused. I was like, what did you send him? Oh, yeah, no, I sent him like the beginning of a story and then he was like, I can't read it. Oh, that's <laughs> like, fair, I, that's I literally fair. can't read that. But he was like, but I wish you well. That's nice. That's nice that you take the time to reply. And to be clear, I would not be shaming you if you had sent dirty pictures to your favorite authors. When I was 13? (laughs) I was just taken aback. I was like, he got lawyers involved in everything over some little boobies? Dang, that's smart. Like, that's the... You should have. You should have gotten lawyers involved. That's the correct response. Marvin's is is the incorrect response. Yes. Yes. Oh, my God. And, And in that interaction, Marvin is the problematic one, not the girl sending dirty stuff. No, yes, we agree. And what what is he doing? Calling them late at night, like a little calling them great, late dude. at night. That's really upsetting. Does That's he have so like a cool. voice changer too? Like, I actually was really interested in the logistics of this because no one knows who he is, right? And he obviously mm. sounds like a teenager. So, does he have like a voice changer on the other end? Is he like working with that? Like, no, what's he up? calls up like the like the guy who runs the uh, the the ticket booth on the Simpsons. Hello, sir. <laughs> I hear you like my Match Slate novels. I don't like yeah. that voice. Cooper. No, he has that little, he has that little crack in his voice yeah. from like puberty, and like no one thinks about it twice. Like, oh, you sound like you're my age. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I got one more quote uh, from Marvin from the end that really I think probably solidifies him as being the villain. I'll tell you what Max Slate would say about this situation. He would say that it was BS. The hero sets the hero, the heroine sets the hero up, but now she wants him to rescue her, but he doesn't have the motivation. You see, he doesn't care if the villain kills her. Then there's the villain himself. He's as bad off as the heroine. He doesn't know that he's already blown it. He can't kill the heroine because then the hero will tell the police. He can't kill the hero because then, because he can't get to him. This is very confusing. The villain may well kill himself. Or here's a better idea. The heroine should try to kill the villain. You're right. He is the bad it's guy. It's so confusing. It, and he, oh, it's because he thinks he is the hero that makes yes. him the bad guy. Like when you think you're the hero, you are automatically the bad guy. Full stop. You're never the good guy. <laughs> <laughs> As, but especially in this situation. Okay, so we've all voted and... Marvin is the eternal enemy of this book. Let's move to thirst. The reason so many of us cannot forget about Pike is because he wrote smut before anybody else wrote smut for us. Let's Truly a time before the internet existed. Yeah. <laughs> Can you, I, when you said, uh, <clears throat> sorry, this is a really small interjection. It doesn't have anything to do with anything else. But imagine just like a little porn store called Smut for Us, like with a number four. <laughs> Isn't that really good? Right? With okay. four. It, yeah, it has to be a yeah. four, yeah. I, yeah, okay. I'm glad we're all on the same yeah. page here. Thank you. For okay. sure. From the book there of Christopher Pike. Is that like the subtext? Like- <laughs> yeah. I, it, it could be. It could be. <laughs> Uh, before I dig in with my many, many smutty lines, does anyone have any they'd like to call out? No, we save this. I mean, me, I save this for you. This is, <laughs> you can shine here with your quotes. <laughs> yes, go for it, Cooper. Okay. Here's a simple one. What do you want to do Monday night? Screw, she said. Classic. It's so romantic. How sexy. I love it. I want Straight to screw. To the point. Uh, do we know what we're doing we're going to have sex eat dinner have sex go to the movies and have sex he has these interjecting thoughts that are just like the most teenagery things he could possibly be thinking yeah that was very like 14 year old boy Mm -hmm. but it's okay because she had a cute butt shelly did I, i i highlighted that because of the weird folksy tone in it uh, also, again, she had a wonderful bottom, comma, beautiful breasts. Uh, Apparently <laughs> skin and hair as well. <laughs> uh, let's see here. 
one of the main reasons he was conducting an investigation was to keep Shelly happy so that she would sit naked in the jacuzzi with him again. Gross. Oh, classic. We hate him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I finally found it. This is what I was talking about with the people having sex in his books. Um, then Mike takes her back to his place and somehow manages to get her clothes off. They make love in front of the fireplace. The sex is great for both of them. But afterward, Mike feels guilty because Anne is involved with another guy. And Anne feels guilty because to do so is her natural state. Yet, it's possible Mike's guilt is only an act. Marvin can't exactly get into his head, which is strange because Mike is the most like him. Mike and Anne at least agree they must never have sex again, at least not in the immediate future. But they do it again ten minutes after making this vow, and it's no better than the first time. Oh my god, this this whole paragraph, this whole, like, monologue. I mean, good lord. Yeah. It's not well written, but also it's... <laughs> But also, it's like, what did like did a five year old really write this? Like, this is not how people even act. <laughs> I mean, it's not it, how people it actually to each other. is about as coherent as some of the back cover prose about Pike's books. Like, that's true. That feels like the kind of writing that goes on the back of the book. It's just like, wow, way too much information, and not all of it's accurate or believable. Uh, let's see. Here's the letter. <laughs> in my dream, I was alone in the showers, naked, and you came walking in wearing a black tux. At first, I was shy, even when you told me who you were, because I didn't believe that you were the real Max Slate. But then you started kissing me under the warm shower, and your hands were all over my body, and I knew it was you. You were like the devil, because you were so forceful. But it was so good, the sex, that you were like God as well. You can see that I'm a really big fan. It's like, I what, am like, uncomfortable. Yeah. Like, what, what Sailor Moon inspired, like, <laughs> slash, like <laughs> Carrie fantasy is this? Like, oh, good the God. Thing, a, I just... <laughs> a Carrie fantasy. <laughs> I just. <laughs> I just. <laughs> It's just like the, when she says a tux, it's like, well, why? I have so many questions. Why is he like in a tux in the bathroom? But the second, is it like tuxedo mask? Like, because then I get it. Because <laughs> that's just like his vibe. But mm-hmm. oh my God, it's just that that whole fantasy sequence is a something else. Yeah. <laughs> and then, then that letter ends with this. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to write back and give me your phone number. I want you to give me directions to your house. I want you to fly me to your front doorstep. I want to be a part of you, a piece of you. And in return, I'm going to give you all of me. I think it will be sweet. Don't keep me waiting long. That is the creepiest shit. (laughs) Terrifying. Hard stop, hard pass. No thank you. (laughs) Please go. And and just God. just to add to all that uncomfortableness, you know Anne read that first. Oh my God, poor Anne. Poor, poor Anne. fucking Anne. It really does bother me on some level that like his reminder of her age, 11 year old sister is like reading this like creepy like fan letter that is not meant for like your sister to read. <laughs> 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 like keep that stuff like maybe like in the back like corner of your room where you keep the porn like keep those letters there yeah. like like that you know in in your drawer for later screen the letters before your sister reads them yes, yes. <laughs> instead she's the one screening the letters for him which is terrifying yeah good lord okay let's move into die softly where we tackle moralizing and problematic elements in the writing and plot Aside from drinking stuff, I didn't get a lot of moralizing in this, but I've got some problems. How about you all? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's <laughs> not an easy read. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's go with uh, an obvious one. Uh, after he tries to hit on all the girls at the mall, one of them shoves him in the chest and says, go pick on some retarded chicks, pervert. Oh my god. I yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, tough. Tough. <laughs> <laughs> and it, really tough. Like, ugh, um, I didn't. I was like, wow, I can't believe I read this and gave this five stars on my Goodreads at one point oh. in time. I was like, this is fine. <laughs> Hey, we've we've all made weird decisions. At one yeah. point, Independence Day, I called the greatest movie of all time. Okay, I mean that's a little bit better. <laughs> I mean, I it's entertaining. It... It's entertaining. Yeah, is it's the entertaining. Does it have Will Smith in it? <laughs> it does have Will Smith. Yeah, I love Will Smith. Yeah, it has aliens in it. Come on. Yeah, yeah. Okay. there's explosions. Not greatest film of all time material, though. Let's be clear. I mean, at least it's not extremely problematic. <laughs> I don't know. I haven't watched it in a while. It might be. It could be. Okay. I've got another one here. How does Lavender Heaven sound? She oh, asked. The, yeah. A little fruity. Yes, but we know that neither of us is gay. Oh, my God. Like, kill me. <laughs> when I read that, I was like, I think that just went over my head when I was little. <laughs> yeah. I, I, you know, that, <laughs> that's one of those mild ones. When I read it too, because it was you know this morning, and I was like, he when he responds fruity, I was like lavender. Do you think that smells fruity? Like, I don't know. And I'm sitting, I was literally trying to like, I was like, I would say more floral, but maybe he just doesn't know the word floral and he thinks. <laughs> and then it gets he's a the writer though. I well, come on, yeah, <laughs> you have skin and hair, so. And then, <laughs> um, and then the next line though, and I was like, wait a minute, did they really? I had to reread the whole thing like two times because I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> why why did you even need to have this in here for any reason at any time this yep. is silly hashtag suddenly gay joke yeah really bad bad yeah. joke bad poor not taste even, not even remotely clever not even funny yeah like not it doesn't need to be there it. and it's but funny. I also i also sat there thinking the fruity thing i was like <laughs> it's not fruity <laughs> no yeah it's weird uh, i forgot that was like a, a slur at Me one too. point in time and <laughs> i was like oh my god that yeah okay <laughs> and all i can ever think of when someone says something is fruity and is making that joke is in psycho when mother says oh the fruit seller do you think i'm fruity <laughs> which is very funny because oh my god, and I haven't watched that movie. In it's a, a long dead time. woman talking to Norman. Hashtag spoiler alert. <laughs> From a movie made in nineteen sixty. Yeah, I know, I know, but still some people don't know. I mean, I haven't seen it, but I don't mind it being spoiled. <laughs> you should see it. It is very good. I'll jump right into it now that I know how it ends. <laughs> I, I figured you might. Okay, and then I got one more in the problematic section. Actually, Harry had been going out with Shelley several months before Marvin had managed to stake a claim to her. Ugh. Hello, incel. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> Women are property. Really Fun. upsetting. I mean, he does treat... Shelley is treated by every man like as she's property. This is, so I can see why she uh, decided to go kind of a crazy noir woman and be like... <laughs> No, I'm going to just have everyone kill each other. Mm -hmm. That's a man. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> um, does, does anyone have any other problematic elements they'd like to discuss? I kind of want to bring it back to that one line that we already discussed about how he fell for the worst kind of slut just because he didn't get his way, which kind of like piggybacks on the one you just said. But yeah, like, well, I mean, girl, he really please. just goes out of his way to be awful about Shelley in the second half of this book. Right. Like he, he is so angry and so petty and so incel. And there's that guy who gave us a bad review because we kept talking about how uh, sometimes people are incels. And I just want him to know that incel is a bad thing and you don't want to be it. Yeah, yeah he was like, oh, people call shit. me an incel, yeah. so I don't like that you guys are using that as an insult. Dude, if people Basically, call you an incel, you should probably yeah, look for that. If you right. do anything that makes people call you an incel, you should rethink what you're doing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow, that's tough. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I would, I know it's not a quote, but I would just add the whole, like, stalker peekaboo scene where he's watching oh, her yeah. triad in the, the hot tub where it's like, dude. Like, my man, don't be, like, spying on your girlfriend, like, Nate, or your, your, not even your girlfriend, the girl that you fantasize over, like, naked in a bathtub. Or the girl that you got to else. cheat on her boyfriend with. Yeah, her boyfriend. Triad is technically her boyfriend yeah. right now, kind of. Like, that's the guy that she is seeing. <laughs> it's just obnoxious. 
Even if he is like crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Still, like it's it's really gross and invasive to think that he was like and she does, I don't think he ever tells her. No, he doesn't. Nope. No way. Doesn't, doesn't, uh, never comes up again. Like, oh, yeah, I totally saw you talking uh, naked in the hot tub with Trump. No, he did because she explained <laughs> that does. they weren't actually naked because of all the bubbles. Yeah, I oh. love how that's her reaction and not like, you were in my house. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> well, because she even said, she's like, I knew you were there. Oh, watching yeah, she did it because oh, he was right. there. Right. Because yeah. she's super noir girl. Yeah. Yeah. Because she's the she master has... of murder. She really <laughs> is. The true master of murder. She should really The more the we talk about her, the more I do like Shelly, I think. Yeah. She is she is getting nearer and nearer to Sugar Sister levels. She is. She's not quite there. I think she needs a little bit like because she's stupid in the beginning, too, because you're like you're going after all of these people because you think they killed your boyfriend and your boyfriend's just an idiot who was super territorial and almost killed you and then ended up killing like himself. Like, all, I mean, you know, the other guy had something to do with it. Blah, 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 whatever. Triad. Come on. <laughs> yeah, triad, I mean, uh, manipulated him into yeah. like, this plan, whatever. There was a big plot hole though that she missed. And I feel like she could have used all of her cleverness to find somebody better and do some way bigger, cooler shit in a bigger town, bigger city somewhere. Just, Move to New York, girl. Start your big life. I think she and uh, really? Anne should take his Corvette and just leave town. Oh, but Anne doesn't like Shelly. Oh, <laughs> Anne doesn't like. Well, she might after she gets might, to know yeah. her. That's yeah. true. Well, after she realizes her brother's a creep in her older age, yeah. she'll be like, actually, I miss, uh, I misunderstood Shelly. Yeah. And I she's think, actually I think the that's hero. What's happen, yeah. Yes. And then she takes her under her wing and then they go start a spinoff. Yes. Who? And, and they we, are the writers now. We've got <laughs> another end. Pike spinoff for Cassie. It's the end of Birds of Prey for me, except <laughs> they're just going off in their little red Corvette now with an egg sandwich. Yes, I love it. Okay, let's move into the season of Passage, where we talk the best and worst writing. I've actually got a few from both. Then, uh, But let's start with the Pikeisms. Uh, we all We have the traditional... Uh, Pikeism of the absentee parents, where, where Pike specifically says, God bless parents who went away for the weekend. <laughs> I like that. I love how always his parent, the parents are just gone. They're and just like gone. Shelley's parents, they might as well be dead. Yeah, right. We don't know. It doesn't matter. <laughs> and McDonald's, it's back. Uh, he tried eating a hamburger from McDonald's, but it made him think of dead cows. So if Pike did have a thing going with McDonald's at one point, I think that line would have killed it. Maybe they served him a raw burger like they did me. <laughs> <laughs> you yes, even do yes. that at McDonald's? Is that even- no, yeah. they don't. But one character in Monster gets rare Big Macs, which doesn't even make sense. Oh my God, you're right. How could you cook that. a Big Mac rare? Like those patties are so thin. Well, first off, it I think they come like cooked anyway. Like that is just my opinion of McDonald's. Like they already are cooked when they're there, so it's like you can't even like pretend to try to make it rare. Yeah. I, I mean, mean but I guess that quarter could... pounder that I got was actually pink. Well, actually, no, now quarter pounders, uh, they cook right there. They should have told I, I me. never every time I go there now, I think about that, Becca, and I I have not gotten well, to be fair, I don't order those anyway because I'm scared because they're so thick and I'm like, yeah. Oh, that's a lot of meat for <laughs> never mind. I don't that it's no, it, you be, think of dead cows yes yeah, that yeah um and i'm sorry i threw myself off and i don't know i'm so sorry i got so was it was it saying they're so thick and that's a lot of meat is that yeah, what threw you I, off I, cassie? I was gonna laugh and do a joke but i was like this is not the time cassie stop 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 <laughs> but i kept trying to tell myself to stop but it kept playing in my cassie, head it is always <sighs> the time for a God, perverted just, joke here on the pike cast <laughs> We were in the, well, you know, we passed the titillation section. Okay, but anyways, Becca, every time I go to McDonald's now, I think about that. And I'm like, they did Becca wrong. They, they did, did my girl wrong with Aww. her quarter pounder. And it was raw. And I'll yeah. never get one now out of solidarity. <laughs> wow. Thank you yeah. for thinking and caring about my life. <laughs> You're really welcome. But it, it stops only at there because I do like the Big Macs. I will oh, yeah. I've gone back for chicken <laughs> leggy, so we're good. Yes. <laughs> they took away the spicy one. Okay, sorry. I'm hungry a little bit. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We can keep going. <laughs> let's, let's, let's slide into the writing. I do have a few good lines, but now now that we've gone through all this, I don't know. I, my, I, my judgment may be impaired. 
Um, she blushed I again. I have one as well. Oh, sorry. Oh, oh, you go first. Then you go first. Oh, okay. Because I came prepared with one that I actually really liked that I surprisingly wrote down. Um, it's the you're never sweet without being mean at the same time, which I Ooh. I really like that line. Yeah. And I, I feel like that's also like a lot about my personality. Like I, <laughs> I do that as well, where I'll say something nice, like mean and combat it with something sweet or like vice versa, like as a joke. Because I like picking on people that I'm really close with. And I just was like, oh, I really relate to the way he, like that line and that, that vibe. No, yeah, that is And that's, that's yeah. Shelly. She's she's never sweet without being mean at the same time. That's true. That sounds like all the people that I end up trying to date. And it never <laughs> works out for me. <laughs> I'm sorry that I, <laughs> I apologize for all the sweet and mean people. It's okay. It's okay. I forgive. I forgive all of them. <laughs> So I have this here. She blushed again. I can't take off my clothes in front of you. I'm too shy. I'll look the other way. We'll put bubble bath in the jacuzzi. I'll gouge out my eyes. I like that. He he escalated it fast. He did. I know. <laughs> he, he does that a few times in this where he just shoots up into escalation. Um, it's the writer in him. Yes. Like and Shelly speaking. knew it from the beginning. She was like, oh my God, it's the writer in you. It's so hot. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that is how she knew, isn't it? Yes, kind of. She she's told, like, you told, told these all wild stories. tales oh, <laughs> over right. dinner. Well, no, wild. I'm even angrier. <laughs> um, here's one. Also, she You're... said the way that he talked, it matched his voice, yeah. his written voice. That, yeah. I mean, as someone whose who's writing does pretty much directly match my voice, I wouldn't be surprised if someone knew me for my work. As a teenager, reading a book? Oh, no, not as a teenager. <laughs> I'm just saying right now, I think it's possible. That's fair, okay. <laughs> I'm not saying that it's plausible what happens in this book in okay. any way. <laughs> okay. I do like that line, though. And as much as it's like a cringe scene, I still like that scene because I'm mm -hmm. like, ooh, it is just like, it's it's just sexy enough because it, yeah. it keeps the actual sex away from you. And you're like, oh, I want more. <laughs> it's it's and that's exactly how the, book gets the you. kind of thing that an 11 or 12 year old would be like oh my parents can't know i'm reading this and then you keep reading because you're like i want them back in that hot tub i want to finish yeah. that scene <laughs> maybe they'll maybe they'll be in the hot tub again oh no now it's another person in the hot tub well maybe they'll have sex <laughs> i want that hot tub to be like the center of the story <laughs> That hot tub for me, that was the iconic scene for me when I was little. It was the hot tub. Nothing that, else mattered. The that hot is tub was not there. surprising. I totally get that. Yeah. <laughs> what happens when you put bubble bath into a hot tub? Well, you it goes not crazy. <laughs> okay. That's what I thought. So yeah. then Don't doing do it. it was bad. Okay. Because like bubble bath gets its foam from just the water running. That is how bubble bath gets it. So you put jets in there. It's just going to go straight up. Yeah. Which could be fun. When she says the bubble started going away, she was lying. That's not happening. Yes. Okay. <laughs> well, I mean, they're unless they're lying. sitting out there for hours, which I guess is possible. I mean, they're basically like two bodies, two uh, uh, skins and hairs. <laughs> 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 and like a sea of bubbles. And the parents are not like, <laughs> parents aren't mad at all. She's like ruining their bubble. <laughs> they're like <laughs> hot tub. With well, and also, night. also, you gotta you gotta assume the hair's getting in the filter too. Yeah. Oh yeah, because she's it's, she's it's naked. Fall. Or he's naked. <laughs> There's just so much hair. Both of them have a lot. Hair. Well, and I need skin. to recover from that one. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> well, <laughs> okay, so she so says wrong. you're good with one-liners, aren't you? He shrugged. Whole paragraphs. No. Cute. Good <laughs> pickup line. I took when you first started reading that I thought you were just talking and I was like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, I like that one. That's a good one. <laughs> That's like such a nerdy thing to say. It, it is, but I I, uh, okay. I enjoy it. Like yeah. Like I, yeah. The, I find that on that weird line between charming and full of yourself. Yeah. That's true. That's like one of his very few charming lines. Yeah. It's, he has very few. That one works. Very few. So this is fun here too. Also from the hot tub. He caressed Iconic her. scene. He wasn't <laughs> sure where. 
and she moaned with pleasure. Or maybe he Love moaned. It. it was a big world, he knew, a big universe. <laughs> but in that moment, there was only her, nothing else. And yet he had never felt so full. He's never been naked with a girl until this moment, this he exact has, moment. This never is the been only naked time. With a girl, yeah. He's touching a girl's flesh and he's like... <gasps> Her, her skin and her hair. It's yeah. her lovely skin and hair. She has lovely skin and hair. He doesn't even know who he's touching. Just imagine he's rubbing his own thigh and he's just like, oh my God. <laughs> oh my God, he probably is. I'm like, I'm crying. And, and he's like, do you I'm like crying. it? It's like, you're, you're not doing anything. I'm rubbing someone. That's you. Shelly's wow. just like, uh, are we gonna? And he's just like, oh God. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> He's, he's in the bubbles, moaning, 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 and Shelly comes back in, back out from the uh, from the kitchen with drinks, and she's like, "What are you doing?" <laughs> he's like, "Oh shit!" He's like, "Oh, wow. well, that that's over with. We can try again in ten minutes. <laughs> yeah, give me he a few found, minutes. It's just some other flesh and hair." <laughs> But also, is it like, okay, logistic wise, maybe this is like gross that I thought this, but isn't it like really like difficult to like even like get to the point of arousal in a hot tub for a man? I'm like, this is just not probable. <laughs> okay, I can answer that question, but do you want me to? No. Is it because of the temperature? I'm thinking of the temperature, yeah. It's like, it would be just like, I mean, I guess he's a teenager. It wouldn't really matter. I'm, I'm just going to say no. Okay. Okay. I thought that was, I mean, I thought that was true. Yeah, uh, so I was like, logistically, this doesn't even seem possible. So we don't know a lot <laughs> about those kinds of things here. <laughs> I mean, I could say I do, but. Oh, yeah, I don't. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm going to put my bona fides on the table. I take people to a swinger resort every year that has a giant hot tub. Every time oh. I've been in a hot tub, it's been with my family, so. Oh my, you, you need to have more fun hot tub time. Think of the possibilities that this book has presented to you. I think about the germs in the hot tub. <laughs> oh, well, you know, I the mean, nice thing about hot tubs is they're usually full of really, really powerful chlorine that, ki that kills the germs. And maybe bubbles. And uh, maybe if you're Don't put the bubbles in there. <laughs> <laughs> don't ruin the hot tub. No, I mean, I, I have definitely like tried to live out this scene in my life and, and, and I, i've been disappointed with the results <laughs> were, were, were you uh no bubbles, unsure of who was who was moaning <laughs> no i was a little bit older maybe it was them maybe it's wiser. me <laughs> maybe we're in this cosmic reality where yeah. like i don't know what what body parts are <laughs> Just skin and Just hair is all I need. <laughs> um, oh speaking God, of dying. skin okay. and hair, uh, Shelly says, you have balls, she said. Two of them, he said. You should kiss me again. <laughs> Did you like my He's speaking He's all about the anatomy in this book. Yes, he is. <laughs> He's good at counting. He <laughs> He's like, people... We got we got skin, we got hair, we got balls. It's just yeah. humanity. <laughs> Two of them. The best writer of, of his generation. Teenagers. <laughs> best writer. Okay, here, um, uh, Mr. Raymar asks, how do you know he's not married? Sandy sighed. I can tell by the way he writes that he's been hurt deeply in the past by one woman. She was very beautiful, but he had to leave her. His sister? Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> this is just like, it's fan fiction before I think fan fiction really existed. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> and my last bad line is the opening line of his magnum opus that he spends literally like three days writing. Mike Madison sat in class watching the beautiful Jessica Moss putting lipstick on her wide, sensual mouth. Jessica was two seats up on his right, and she was reading a Hollywood sex novel. Dun, dun, I'm dun. sorry, he read this in front of his entire school, including adults, like teachers. And, and they were one like, teacher yeah, gave bravo. him an A on it. I'm appalled. <laughs> like, <laughs> that teacher should have come up to him and been like, why did you read that to me? Yeah, what, <laughs> why, what were you why, thinking here? 
what were you thinking of like reading that first sentence in front of your principal and being like, yes, this is it. Like all the teachers will like be so jealous that I wrote this smutty <laughs> ass novel <laughs> about teenagers. And it's like, it's borderline creepy that the teachers are like, oh my God, yes, genius. Because it's like, um, these are about teens. What's that Literally borderline the, the things creepy that you teach. It is creepy. <laughs> Like, don't read about teenagers being maybe sexy. <laughs> <laughs> like, and so there's that's a lot it. of a lot a lot of layers. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay, but can we? <clears throat> sorry, just a quick mention to the teacher. Yes. First of all, he mentions that this teacher's been trying to get a book published for ten years, and then he just does I it know. so fucking smugly while he's got his like fifth or sixth book being published, and he's about to speak to his whole school and like smart ass, he'd be like, "It's been me the whole time <laughs> with my mediocre ass <laughs> fucking writing." And this poor teacher, bless her, and how kind and just good of a person that she is. She doesn't even try to like fuck him over. She's like, you know what? She sits down reads his first book she's like this wasn't trash garbage eh, it's fine a plus let me make you feel better about mm-hmm. yourself even though you're an asshole you're clearly a dick i just like the teacher i just wanted to give a shout out to her I Cassie, really. i think your your other sequel is the teacher exacting her revenge yeah she kills him and then she writes about it and that book sells a million copies yeah. with everything cassie has said so far i'm so excited to hear her like reading <laughs> <laughs> Me, too. Gonna be good. <laughs> Me too. I feel like I feel like there has never been a book we've read that could be all over the map. Like I literally don't know if I could guess any of your ratings. Oh, Jen- I did want to go back to one oh, yeah. thing about the teacher. Yeah. It is incredible that like it is such a serve of her to come up to him and be like, I read your first book while waiting in this like short line for you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like you tell him. You tell him. It was nothing to me. I flew through it. <laughs> I read it, it in two minutes. Like, your writing is that of a third grader. <laughs> you are simple, son. And then she just slams the book down and asks for a refund. Yeah. A plus. <laughs> Who am I signing I do this to? She... No one. <laughs> she walks away. <laughs> She does have, like, a full-on breakdown, though, when he announces himself. Yeah, she does. Like, he does mention that. He's like, oh, my yeah. God. And then she starts, like, crying over in the Didn't corner. she faint? Yes, somebody somebody fainted, didn't somebody, they? It wasn't her that fainted, but she oh. put her head down in, like, her lap. And no, it was one of the teenagers that fainted, I think. Yeah, it was, like, the one that fantasized him about being hot and coming to their, like, doorstep yeah. or whatever. <laughs> oh, it was the one that was, like, fantasizing about him being, like, the hot guy that's blonde with blonde babies Yes, or right, 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 right. Ingrid Michelson? No, that wasn't his name. What Jesus, was his, like... Irving, Too- Irving smelling, smeller. <laughs> <laughs> Dunlap. <laughs> Irving Dunlap, yeah. Oh, who is Irving Smello? I'm sorry, fella. <laughs> Very common name. Oh, yeah. Oh, confused him with one of the many Irvings I know. <laughs> okay, Jenny, oh, you get to go first. There's out of five pikes, and I will caveat as we've read this today. We are basing it on pikedom, not on its position in the greater literary canon. Okay, great. Because mine is it's five out of five pikes. Nice. <laughs> nice. You've got balls, two of them. I also have skin and, and hair. Skin I mean, and I'm, hair. I'm here. I'm ready for the jacuzzi. <laughs> You know what? At first when I reread this, I was like, I hate myself. And then after this conversation, I'm like, you know what? I love my old self so much. Like they knew, you know, this is like secret window. It's like my dream. Like Marvin, I want to be you. I want to. I I love it when when a guest will stick to their guns like that. I love it, Jenny. Thank you. I'm I'm here. It's still like, you know what, maybe problematic, but it was one of my favorites. I feel like the entire Pike uh, collection could be be summed up with, it's maybe problematic, but we really enjoy it. (laughs) But you know what? Convoluted story be damned. Yes. yes, yes. (laughs) I love story within a story in a story. (laughs) Becca, you're next. Okay. I'm going, <laughs> I am going to give it one and a half exploding Seymour the Frogs. 
Whoa. <laughs> yes. Because I really wish this book would have been about him writing his own murder, but it was not. And I felt like I felt like so he, he felt really majorly missed let down by yeah, the cover. Because I feel like that was such a good concept, and then he, that's not what happened. So, Becca, um, it is worth mentioning. Yes, that me. is your lowest grade in the entire Pike cast. I'm so sorry, Jenny. You don't <laughs> okay. have to be sorry. You don't have to apologize. I actually I rated this like two stars on Goodreads. <laughs> <laughs> oops <laughs> but here it's a totally different ball game. absolutely i just picture when cooper sent her the email being like which book do you want to cover and she's like oh this one is my favorite and then cut to her rereading it and it's just like oh fuck what did i what the hell? Well, no, i mean i told you actually, when i read the skin and hair line i was yeah. like i had a moment a moment where your know. soul actually left your body and said that's it i'm out of here <laughs> i was like well my life has been a lie thanks goodbye <laughs> I'm gonna go uh, try to murder my um, my uh, my <laughs> my fantasy's boyfriend on a bridge, <laughs> <laughs> and the okay. cycle repeats itself. Okay, Cassie, hit me. What um, do you got? I'm gonna I'm gonna give it to two pikes, I think, and both of them are for Shelley. Okay, and also there's going to be just a small bit to equal another half of of skin and hair. <laughs> Just in a pile, not in the shape of a human either, because he didn't say it had to be. He just no. said she was lovely skin and hair, yeah. so it's very lovely skin and hair in a pile on the ground next to my pipes. <laughs> um, I there were problematic things. This <clears throat> I didn't like the main character, and I didn't like his stories. I do usually like the little side stories in the book, so that was a bit of a letdown for me. Um, but it was fun to roast, like really fun. So I have to say that. And then there were just a lot of lines in here that I think. They're going to stick with me Um, Mm -hmm. just like the like like skin and hair often do. And um, also there's uh, there's something to be said for having like hair that I can touch on the cover of my book. Oh, yeah. The cover is nice. That as well. Yeah. So the embossed cover basically (laughs) uh, sold you a little bit more. It did. It did. Yeah. And I mean, it wasn't it wasn't awful, but we're rating it among other pikes. And a lot of his other ones that I've read are are my favorite. And this one is not one of them. So (laughs) I (laughs) it was fun, though. I like this episode. So I'm glad we did it. (laughs) Okay, I'm also going to go with two and a half. And my uh, half is just a mountain of bubbles. <laughs> so it could go higher, but it's not going to. I just, I have an important question about it though. Is there any skin and hair under the bubbles? Well, you have to dive in to find out. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, reach through the bubbles, see if you can find some hair. No, 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 It no. might only be your own, but you, might, you yeah. never know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is if that me? If you moaning, you don't know. If it's you or someone else. If you're still in the same dimension after you reach into the bubble, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> and that brings us to the end. Jenny, you have been a delightful guest. I hope you've enjoyed yourself. Oh my god, I love this. I want to come back if that's well, we, <laughs> even in we, the cards. Uh, we talked about um We did Chain Letter Two, right? Oh my god, the the uh book that I stole from the library and still have, yes. <laughs> so, I will be using my library version. <laughs> oh yes. excellent. It's still there. Yes, that's great. I, I still have it. <laughs> okay, so uh we are going to be doing sequel September later this year. And Chain Letter 2 is one of our sequels for that month. So you will be back for that. Hype. Real. (laughs) Just like skin and hair is real. My hype is also real. (laughs) In the meantime, is there anything you'd like to tell our listeners about where they can find you or any of your work online? Um, yeah, I so I write for the Austin Chronicle, and it's a newspaper, but everything is online these days. Therefore, also my reviews are. I write reviews weekly, so you can find it on my author page. I also in two months, which I know it's, it's two months out, but my film festival, the Austin Asian American Film Festival, where I am the programs director for, nice. will be online. And also some drive-ins if you live in Austin. Uh, but we'll have it online June 4th through the 20th so look out for that the programming should be pretty aces nice and yeah 
<laughs> and I think the actually the online film festivals have been one of the greatest things about this whole pandemic situation because it's really afforded a lot of people who can't do the film festival thing to uh, join in. Yeah, it's really nice. We ours last year we only did shorts and now this year we can do some features. So, I'm excited to see what that looks like for us and our audience. Yeah. So, Very nice. it should be should be great. Becca, where can we find you online? Yes. So, you can find me um my blog is at asToldbyBex.wordpress.com and I mostly talk about books. I can be found on Twitter at asToldbyBex and on Instagram at readwithbex. And Cassie you can find me online. My blog is letsgetgalactic.com and my shop is shopletsgetgalactic.com where I sell books and resin art and prints and bookmarks and things like that. And then you can find me on social media at control alt Cassie, like on your keyboard, C-T-R-L-A-L-T-C-A-S-S-I-E on Twitter and Instagram. I also have a Patreon and it's patreon.com slash letsgetgalactic. By the way, I creepy stalked your Etsy and I love your art. Thank you. (laughs) I I don't think it's considered creepy stalking when you go to someone's online store. That's true. I guess it's not. I I feel like that's exactly what they want from their online people. The amount of time, like the amount of effort I put into sharing it. Thank you. You did you did what I want. Thank you. (laughs) And I have shared it with people. So thank you. (laughs) You can find me online at Cooper S. Beckett. That's my website. That's my social media. And also Beckett Arts is my new arts. So it's not really new at this point. It's like months old, but that's where you can find my art. Um, I also have opened up for uh, freelance web design. So if you're looking for web design, I do it. Let me know. That's felt very pluggy. I don't know. Well, the end is where we're all supposed to plug. That's things. true. That's, that's, true. Yeah. that's true. You're allowed to do that. <clears throat> yeah. I try. I try. Uh, uh. Okay. Cassie, tell, tell our listeners where they can find our show. You can find us on Patreon at patreon.com slash the Pikecast. And we're also all on social media, the Pikecast, T-H-E-P-I-K-E-C-A-S-T. It's very easy. We're on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And we'd really love to see your book. So if you want to use the hashtag, show us your Pike, we'll retweet it or share it to our stories. Thank you. Excellent. Okay, listeners, your homework for next time is 1988's Spellbound. And we'll see you soon on the Pikecast. No yay, Cassie? Woo! <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> you survived the night, friends. You can peek out from under your covers and see the first blues of dawn out the window. Thanks for spending the night with the Pikecast. And we hope you'll join us again next time. Until then, pikers, pleasant dreams. Well, there's a countdown in everything now. There's, they've just overhauled the uh, the Zencaster interface, and I'm I'm just in you know gadget geek heaven here. Okay, and Cassie. <laughs> Um, I know I was just I was like should I start or was (laughs) I'm sorry okay sorry I I forgot to unmute myself thanks for making it weird everybody (laughs) I was like there's a huge pause I know I was supposed to say something else (laughs) she's like am I forgetting something